All right, welcome back. So this is going to be part two of this um, intro to view, and the aspiration is to do a couple of these because I'm preparing a course for Scrimba, and I want to make like the best course ever. And I can't do that, to be honest, if I'm just doing it in isolation. Because um, I don't have context as to you know, what people know or what people don't know. I don't have context as to what do people like, what do they not like. So this is very much sort of like me trying to figure out how do I make really high quality pervasive content um, in the open. So this is sort of like open source learning or open source teaching. Um, because I want you to interact with me as much as possible and I don't want you to be shy whatsoever to ask questions. Think of this as like a digital classroom and I am like your unqualified teacher, blah, blah, blah. Um, so <clears throat> seriously, like if I'm going to be doing these in general, so I hope you can, you know, use these to your benefit because that's what they're for. I want to be able to take people in other countries um, and give them the sort of confidence they need to be confident developers, not just for the web, but in general. And so view is sort of one aspect of this puzzle. Um, cool. Yeah, so ask questions often and quickly. Like seriously, don't be shy at all. Uh, I'll check every few minutes. So we made Hello World in Vue, <laughs> which should, which actually should disappoint you, um, because we haven't done anything that we couldn't do in HTML and CSS. And I hope you're sort of like, eh, I want to learn more. Because let me show you a very quick example. Um, in probably the the next like live stream I do related to Vue. I would love to cover this one. It's going to be more than we, like, it's more. It's going to take more time than I have to give you right now. But this website, HTML, CSS, and Vue, and the view, and sorry, the the. Remember, Vue has control flow. So when I program this, if I like look at the debugger, I have like four, six. So I have um, twelve basically divs. That's a little insane. What I can do with Vue is refactor this monolithic code base that I have into a for. So I can do a for loop. And that's really powerful um, because I don't need to think about websites in like this one-to-one -one ratio. Um, you know, as you're writing HTML, it's like super ver verbose. It's like I have like this thing and then I have to like have an open and a closed bracket and then I have some text and then I have like another closed bracket. So HTML comes with its own friction, which is fine, except again, it sort of alienates you as a developer. If you want to build something, why do you need to spend so much time doing these sort of idiosyncratic things? And so the reason I'm sort of highlighting Vue um, is really because for me, there's like this awakening of like, oh, we don't have to write HTML like this anymore. And that goes really far as far as like your personal fulfillment or your personal enjoyment. Um, I mean, I've definitely had times when I was a developer that I was like, nothing is user friendly, this sucks man, I hate man pages, they're just like mansplaining everything. Sorry, that joke was too easy. But the point is that like, being a developer, to be honest, sucks at times. Um, but Vue really does help and there is not such a big learning curve that it is going to take you much time. So if you are you know, if you understand the sort of ethos behind HTML, it's a markup language, it's a representation of a data structure, and if you understand CSS is a cascading style sheet, like if you get these sort of basics, you can assume it's okay to start learning Vue, even if you don't know JavaScript. And people might fight me on this, but Vue will teach you how to write JavaScript implicitly. It's very similar to Go, right, Golang. Um, if you are learning programming, Go is a phenomenal language to learn programming, albeit that Go can be sort of advanced, and that's because Go will teach you implicitly good programming practices. Vue, I think, really is similar to, to, to Go in that sense. And by the way, Vue and Go are like a perfect combination because Vue will allow you to write the front end and then Go will allow you to write the back end. So knowledge of both um, really is sort of, is, is, is greater than its parts or the phrase that everyone says. All right, so we're gonna come back and do this example in the, the next like live cast, which I think will be tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, but for now, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do something kind of funny. Okay, so 
pretty boring website. It's not that different than Hello World. It's a bomb. Now, we're attaching some logic here so that if I press the bomb, it explodes. It's not a big deal. But um, the point is, we can take this further. So, for example, I can, I can do more here. Um, so, the thing is, like, when you use HTML or CSS, you start to think like HTML and CSS. And that's problematic because there are not enough like pseudo elements in CSS that you can make really rich interaction, um, rich like you, user experiences. So like, sorry, let me check questions. I'm being like a bit fast. Cool. Questions, ask them. So in, um, in, in, in CSS, right, you're like, you have like, oh, I have like before, whatever that means. I have like after, cool, right? I have hover. And like it's fine, but it's really limiting you in terms of your potential. It's limiting um, how you think about sort of interactive code or user experience. And, and so Vue is going to sort of take us out of that like Stockholm syndrome and allow us to think about like experience and interaction much more sort of natively or fluently. So if you're like a little bit tired of like pseudo selectors or sorry, pseudo elements in um, HTML or CSS, like this is like a really, this lesson will be super important for you. Because right for here, have a website, not that different, right? Turn on the debugger, pretty simple. Uh, this is just like a span, I think. That's why it has its own box, I think. Yeah, and, and effectively when we click it, we're adding logic so that the background and then the emoji itself changes. Um, now, again, this is like kind of not the best example, but if you understand this, then uh, here, you can go to zadik.com slash Rodinger, like that, if you want to try this. Um, I didn't make this like cross browser like compliant, so it's going to look, if you're not on a Mac, it might look weird, but I'll show you here, and because this is encoded in a video, I don't need to worry about that right now. Um, <clears throat> I should start putting like the the fa like the code online, so you can just like open it up. Uh, let me check for questions. I'm studying assembly here, and this makes me crazy. So how can I help you? Just tell me. Um, yeah, the thing is like assembly is like you're like really deep in the weeds. So like I'm complaining about like CSS pseudo elements. It's nothing compared to like assembly. Okay, so here is our website. I'll show, we're, gonna, we're gonna make this at least enough to understand it. And the significance of this is, okay, so I click the box, the cats dot dot dot. It's sort of weird. And, and, and note, um, sorry, pro tip um, emoji on Chrome can't go bigger than like 128 pix pixels because emojis are not vectors, surprisingly. But if you use uh, Safari, emojis can get bigger than 128 pixels. So if you like need to take a screenshot of your website and the, and the emojis like disappearing, you can use Safari, possibly Firefox, to get the emoji. Okay, so click the box, the cats dot dot dot. So not a lot of options here. Know that the box is shaking. So sort of right shaking. That's just a CSS animation. Super easy to do it. It's not like JavaScript, blah blah blah. Right? It's we're gonna use JavaScript sort of as minimalistically as possible here. Click the box. The cat's alive. It's so sweet. We click it again. Cat. <laughs> the cat's dead. Um, <clears throat> and one of the nice things about this, <clears throat> we have sort of we have an array of cats effectively that we can get. We're not going to necessarily, I mean, we can, but we're not necessarily going to get the, the same cat every time. But dead cats are dead cats, so there's only so many. So this is a sort of interesting, right? Because it's not as simple as Hello World, but if we were to program this in vanilla HTML or CSS, at the same time, this would be like sort of a pain because, let's think about this. We can do all this without JavaScript, but clicking this, Right, we could like do a hover event, but then it would activate. We could do like a checkbox, which would be very clever. Um, and maybe, but like that's the thing. Like if you like only think about website design in HTML and CSS, um, 
you are like putting yourself in a straitjacket in terms of like what you can do and in terms of like your personal creativity, which again, we're not trying to get alienated as developers. Um, so, so, so here's the point. This is really simple. So let, let's look at the, the code for the bomb example. And then once you, oops, once you understand this, then the next one is really just like a few more lines of code. Okay, so it's, it's not that many lines of code that I feel confident in sort of showing you. Uh, so yeah, this is G, like a lot of like practice over here. Okay, so again, I have a second instance of the app <clears throat> and that's just so that we have like a cool debugger, right? So before I even show you the code, take a look. So we just came from hello world, sorry, hello view. And if we scroll down, we see hello who, right? Who was inside of our like printf, right? It wasn't printf, but it was similar. Here, you can probably tell our view app has, it's an, right, it has an object inside of it. And that object has a data, data object. And then that data object has a property. And that property's name is emoji, right? So just knowing that, here we can make some inferences. I have initialized my app. I've given it options. I am targeting, in this case, I'm using dot app. Could use a ID here, but just changing it up. I have my app right here. So that's where I'm binding our, our, our view app to our HTML. Inside of it, I have a property called emoji, which has an emoji. And now I have something new. So remember, variables and um, functions. If you understand a variable and a function, which I'm sure you do, then you understand uh, properties and methods. Because all properties and methods are, are uh, just variables and functions that are attached to some other, um, to other, to some other thing in memory, which in, in JavaScript would be an object. But methods and properties are not limited to front end. You know, in backend, you have methods and properties and pretty much every programming language that people use, you're gonna have methods and properties and they are just functions and variables. So, so, so that's the point. So we don't choose the name EL, we don't choose the name data, and we don't choose the name methods. And the thing is like, they could have said like, element and that actually this might work I don't actually know and this this could have been named like variables and then this could have been named properties um, it's sort of arbitrary what the names of these are and again I can't choose these names but the point is just to sort of highlight that this is just sort of how view is designed and I keep focusing on how it's idiomatic when I'm coding my my view app I can expect to have an element data and a minimum of methods right if I look at your view app I, I can expect that sort of same design. And that goes very far in terms of making your code not um, readable. I'm not talking about the actual like code itself. I'm talking about the structure of your code, the code of your code, right? That stuff is so important because, you know, you shouldn't necessarily always have to learn some sort of paradigm every time you look at somebody's code. Um, so this is nice. It's streamlined. It's just emphasizing that our app right now is only as complex as these three categories. So where is our app taking place in our application? Well, it's attaching to dot app. What are its properties or its data, right? Right now I have a property called emoji, which is obvious. And I have a method, which is a function, which this is gonna get a bit weird. So let me look at questions and then we'll, I'll talk about this. Okay, okay. Don't worry about the English, it's not, it's okay. If I'm speaking fast, you can let me know. So again, this is for you, not necessarily for, well, it's for me, it's for you too. Okay, so. <clears throat> so, so far we're getting really comfortable with the idea of having an object inside of an object, right? So we have an object that we are assigning to methods. And then inside of it, I have, just like I have emoji here, I have the name of my method called toggle. And toggle is a function. So the thing is like, this is gonna get overwhelming, or it, I mean, it is already overwhelming, because we have like, if I bring this over here, 
look at how many like indents I already have, right? I have one indent, two indents, and then I'm all the way up to three indents. So the point is that just because you have an object doesn't mean you can't put something like a function inside of it, right? Earlier we were talking about var obj equals like an object. Well, you can do like that function yo equal, oops, to do that syntax, and I'd say like function, um, and then like return yo mama, sorry. So um, you might be wondering like what what is going on here, right? Because we have like function thing, right? And if we get rid of the name of the function, we, we get this, we don't actually get that. So I think it'll, I mean, <clears throat> I don't think white space is gonna like make or break your app, but I just wanna point out when you look at view code, <clears throat> more, time, more, more likely than not, you're gonna see function written like this, which for me was like really weird to see that because it's like, it's, it's, it just, it, it's, it's different enough that I just wanna like, like uh, highlight it, you know, why it looks the way that it does. Now again, I am not going to assume that you, you know very much programming right now. I assume that you know some HTML, some CSS, right? Enough that I, like you won't freak out if you see like a div or a span. But I'm not assuming you know much more than that, um, just for what it's worth. Uh, okay, let me check questions. How are we doing? Okay, it's good so far. So, okay, we have a method named toggle, and then toggle is attached to a function, right? Now this, let me just explain what this is. If we want to manipulate some of our data, right? If I want to manipulate the emoji property inside of our view instance or our app, right? Then <clears throat> if I say emoji, uh, JavaScript is thinking I'm talking about like a global variable over here which I'm not, I need to talk about a very specific emoji, which is, which is part of our, our app's instance. So in this case, we need to indicate that we're talking about a local property and not a global variable. I'm just gonna write that down. Oops. This emoji, local property, not global variable, because this will, it's just not intuitive. Um, the other thing is that like, if you're like really into like ES6, you're like, you're like on the ES6 train, um, you're like, no, dude, I'm not gonna use like that syntax. Like I'm much more enlightened than that. I'm gonna like, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna do like, I don't even know the syntax. I'm gonna use arrow functions, right? Um, arrow functions won't work here because arrow functions are effectively anonymous functions. And anonymous functions, or otherwise called lambda, oops, or lambdas, um, don't necessarily know about their their like they're anonymous in the sense that like they like don't know much about their like surroundings. So if you use um, an arrow function here, it doesn't have knowledge of what this is referring to. So use function here, but inside of the function, you can absolutely use a uh, arrow function. We just can't use it to define um, the, the function corresponding to toggle, right? So we have toggle, what does toggle do, right? Because when I click the bomb, I'm toggling something, right? What am I toggling? Well, I'm toggling two things. We'll start with the bomb. Uh, so let me go back to here. In this example, I'm only toggling the bomb. Nothing else is changing, right? And that's because we're telling this emoji, this is a weird way of writing it. You could write this many, many different ways. This is just sort of a one-liner. Um, we're saying, hey, if this emoji, let me put this like that, if this emoji evaluates to bomb, like if it's true, right? If this is a bomb, then boom. But if it's not a bomb, effectively just like do nothing. So this could have been written as an if statement. I could have said, if this emoji is equal to bomb, then we can be like explode, or I can like, instead I can be like, uh, this emoji equals explode, but like the emoji version of it, like that or whatever. Um, this is just sort of like, I'm making this syntax up, but you, I think you get the significance of it. So that is equivalent in this case. Um, 
this is a, sort of another option. Actually, it might be cute if we if we don't revert it and we like we do like a, like cloud or like oh smoke smoke might be nice. Oh, it's not smoke. Let's do cloud. Let's do uh, like chat bubble. To be honest, finding emojis is really stressful for me. Um, 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 message. Jesus. Okay. Uh, okay, we're just going to do uh, the boring cloud. Okay. So in this case, uh, this is called a ternary, and the ternary expression is checking whether the emoji is its Initial, it's like its initial state, right? So the bomb's initial state is a bomb. And we click it. If it is a bomb, then explode. Um, what does this do? Sorry, ABCDF. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is like totally not going to do anything because our application will always initialize as a bomb. If we did that, then we'll get the cloud. Am I in the right? I'm in G. I'm not in G. That's why. All right. Yeah, now we get the. All right, this is sorry. This is like a very, very bad example. Let me go. Let me do the the if example because that's obviously the problem. Okay, let's 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 do like this, and then we'll say, yeah, okay, like that, and then otherwise. Oh, you know what? Now I realize why I use the ternary, because. If I click the bomb, I can't I can't go back anymore. There's nothing that is indicating. Or I'd have to do like an else if, right? I'd do like else if this emoji, which is like really tiring, because um, it's just like, look, dude, like our app has already turned into like four extra lines of code, and it's like I don't like this personally. So unless it's like clearly confusing, which it's confusing me, uh, you can use um, ternaries, which are very very clever. So. If his emoji, if this emoji is a bomb, then explode. But if this emoji is not a bomb, then, because right, then it would have been exploded, then we would return to our bomb state. So, so that's that's why we can go back. If we do an if statement, if I just like do that if, then I only get um, I can only like explode it and I can't I can't go back. So so that's what's going on. Okay, so assuming that you understand this, let me check the comments. We'll get into the, the actual like HTML of it. Okay. So what's the HTML behind this look like, right? Because that's pretty important. Let's get rid of the second instance of our app, which we are using just for the debugger. Okay, let's like let's take it, let's let's look at this. We have a div, and we have some text, which could be in a paragraph. It's fine. Um, this is like a little bit hard, so like let's just imagine this in the simplest term as possible. So we have like it's a dot dot dot, right? And then oh okay, right? So we have a span dot dot dot, and then oh you know what? Sorry, this was um. This was just like me making it pixel perfect. That is totally not necessary. So this is effectively the extent to the complexity of our app, right? So all we need to do, let me just like comment all this out. So all we need to do is sort of like, this is terribly unreadable. Okay, so all we need to do is like beef this up. So like, let's say we want to target our our ID of app, right? So we go into our div, and we're gonna say ID is app. Okay, now our view is talking to our, our div, right? Now they have a connection to each other. And then, okay, that's fine. And then span, okay, cool. So you can probably figure this out. What do we put inside of here? We can put emoji, right? Now, this is just going to show us, but it's not going to be interactive. Uh, here. Oh, sorry. Let me make this, sorry, I'll just make this class so I get the style. 
glass, that's why. Sorry. Obviously. Okay. So, like, this is a terrible bomb, right? Nothing's happening. So, the point is that this is our Hello World example, but it's also not um, interactive. We can't do anything with it. And our toggle function is basically like, it's, it's like, it's like null, right? It's, it, it's, nothing's happening. So, what we can do is we need to effectively wrap some logic um, around, like, th there's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, what would be like a good way? Like, if we wanted to make this simple, we could do, I think we could do like, return this emoji, and then we're gonna return either one. But if we toggle it, no, nah, it doesn't work. Okay. So, so, I want you guys to see me struggling through this um, personally because I think it's really important to like see that like people don't know everything. Okay, cool. I see what's going on. So I need to wrap this in some markup. Let me check for questions. Okay, cool. I need to wrap this in some markup. So I'm just gonna use a span, right? Why is span not a div or anything else? Well, I want this to be in line with everything else, and I don't want it to sort of distort the box model. So span's gonna be very harmless, because the span's display is inline block. Sorry, is it? Yeah, it's inline block, whereas a div is block. So if I put, um, if I put a div here, it should like start to look weird. Uh, oh, it's because it's flexbox. Usually, um, usually like this would like sort of like break something, so spans are like, typically more harmless. Um, and for what it's worth, you can think of, like we've been talking about like anonymous functions or lam lambdas. Anonymous is like a big thing in programming, right? So like if you need an anonymous block or you need an anonymous uh, inline block, right, for CSS or HTML, you would use for a anonymous block, I'm sure as you can guess, a div, whereas for an anonymous inline, <laughs> for an anonymous inline, block, you would use a span. So think of these as anonymous like elements that you can use that are not descriptive other than their default display value. Okay, so that's why we're using a div to sort of be the box for our app. Um, and we're using span to sort of wrap something if we need to use some markup. Um, span would be like the right element to do that in. Okay, so now we need to do something special. We've talked about binding but that's called, um, it's one-way binding, right? So this can't talk to, it can't like do anything. It's like on an island. Um, so what we need to do is like have some way to get to the island. So one of the things we can do is we can add, um, what do they call it? I think it's, it's, a, it's like an event, it's like an event listener effectively, right? So you do, I think it's V, bind, click. And then we have some like, like we have some like superpowers now. Now the shorthand for this um, is that, which I think is like a lot more readable. So we're saying in the event that we click the span, we want to do something, right? Oh, sorry, it's not V bind, it's V on, right? So V on, and then like that, that. Okay. So when we when we click it, we want to call the toggle function, right? which is interesting because toggle will take care of updating our bomb for us. So let's see if this works. Yeah, right? Um, so like before I had no select, it's just a class I made up to make this unselectable because like when we click it, we don't wanna see this stuff. So, so unselect, what did I use? Oh, no select on this span. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> no select, right? So now I can't select the bomb, which is sort of nice. Um, Cause if I'm clicking it like a lot, I don't want to see it become blue cause I would like take away from the experience. Okay, so let me break this over two lines. So now our, our span is like more special, right? Cause our span, if, if we click it, view is like literally going into our, our website and creating effectively like event listeners anywhere we um, 
anywhere we use view in this way. So like view, there's like the if, the for, um, there's like the the else, the the else if, right? So there's like a ton of like things you can do as far as the control flow. Um, there's also a ton of things that you can do as far as like binding data. So we can be like, we can bind data with like this, like this, this syntax. Uh, and then there's other things that we can do like attach event listeners, right? So, so far we've used click, but you can, you can attach like keyboard. Um, you can do like key up, enter, it's like something like that. But the point is that like, you don't need to do very, very much work at all <clears throat> to sort of get some of the power that you get with like <clears throat> CSS selectors. <clears throat> Sorry. You don't have to do very much to get the power of like, of like CSS pseudo selectors by using these like really streamlined APIs for talking to JavaScript and like automating a lot of the stuff for you. Okay. So if I click, I'm going to execute the function called toggle, which is inside of my app. Right here. Okay. And 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 now it's working. So so before, right, what was happening? Our background was becoming red. So how can we do that? We need to basically attach something up here. At least that would be one way to do it. Let me, let me check for questions. Okay, we're good. We've got six streamers. My record right now is seven, so I'm like excited about this. Okay, so what we want is for our, our app to turn red if the bomb explodes, because this is like really unsettling. This is like the world's like worst bomb. Okay, so like, what you learn how to do today? Learn how to make a bomb. Um, <clears throat> the way that I did it, and of course it's totally up to you, is I bound a class to the div as a whole. So like up here, I have a really really simple class. Boom, <laughs> right? And all it does is it's going to change the text color from like whatever the default is to white, and it's going to make the background some shade of red. I think this is like the Twitter red. I think that's like why I have it like this versus like that. Anyway, when we click, we want to effectively turn on this class. Um, again, doing this with like CSS selectors would be a pain, sorry, pseudo selectors, and then doing this with like vanilla JavaScript would be like stack overflow hell. So this is again, I'm just, I wanna emphasize like why would you use Vue? You would use Vue to make websites, whether they're interactive or not, you don't need to think about Vue as like a competitor to React. Think about Vue as like a competitor to the old way of writing websites and CSS. Like, like when when like smartphones became popular, everyone wanted to make an app, and then the the barrier to entry for making an app for like iOS or Android devices was like so high because at the time you had to learn Objective C or whatever the language was or Java, right? And so like. You have like this like beautiful device, right? And you want to like make it do something. And then suddenly you have to like scale a 20 foot wall just to like, <laughs> like download Xcode and like get the developer tools. And then like, so the thing is that is sort of insane. Um, you shouldn't need to download like five, what is it like 10 gigabytes? Like let me open the app store and just show you. If you want to make an app, sorry, this is like, this is like totally a sidebar and you're on like a Mac, right? You need to use Xcode, <clears throat> and Xcode is a whopping five gigabytes. When you get into programming, I think you start to appreciate like how much you can do with like a kilobyte, like like gigabytes, right? Like, I don't even know how to express to you like how insane that is. Like that should really be an insane idea that you need to download like hundreds of like billions of lines of like code to make your computer or your phone do something, which is sort of why I think, you know, web apps are interesting because it's like, hey, I don't need to like deal with like this stuff. I can just like make my website. But then the barrier to entry, it isn't 20 foot. It's not 20 feet tall. It's like five or 10, right? And instead you have to learn JavaScript. So JavaScript, it becomes like your replacement for Objective-C or whatever, you know, or Swift now. And that's, you know, it's, it's like hopeful. But like even learning JavaScript for the sake of like making things is sort of like shooting yourself in the foot. Um, it's like 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 this is like my personal like analogy that I'm making up. Like like 
writing JavaScript and getting like your app running is like running with sandals on. You're like tripping over yourself. You're like, like you're like scraping up your feet. Like it's like you can do it, right? But you might need to be a specific kind of person to endure all the idiosyncrasies, like downloading npm, all that stuff. And I and again, like one of my biggest emphasis is emphasis emphasis. One of the things that I care the most about is the developer experience. So we talk about like user interface and user experience all the time. And that's fine, except there's also a developer interface and a developer experience. And the developer, right, they'll call it DI and DU, which are like really not the best. Um, the developer interface and the developer, oh wait, developer experience is DE. Um, <laughs> like DUX for developer user experience. The, the ducks of building a web app. It's terrible, think about it, right? Let's like, let's like make an app, okay. Let's learn JavaScript, okay. Like let's download um, a package manager, okay. Do we use like Yarn or do, you, do we use NPM, okay. Like, oh, my computer, like you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's sort of insane. And so think about it, you like, you like, add this like one little line of code in your your website uh, this one right it could be this is one of them um, I'm gonna start like promoting this one instead just because it's so much simpler and I want to like make myself like famous for like code clean cleanliness let me make sure that's right All right okay so <clears throat> you add this one script tag to your file um, I have it at the top but that shouldn't matter I put it right here. You have this like one line of code, and think about this: your app goes from like running in sandals, um, or like flip flops, or like whatever the, the metaphor is, to like rollerblades. Like that would be how I would want you to think about Vue. You like you just like throw on some rollerblades, and you're or like skateboard, or like a longboard, or like what like whatever it is for you. That's how you should think about Vue. And the difference between like React or Angular, actually I won't speak to Angular because I, I haven't used it enough, but the difference like versus React is like, if you use React, that's fine. I'm not trying to like make you feel bad about it. I just want to point out the difference, which is because of the build process, um, you have to like, you have to do something every time you want to do something else. So it's like every time, it's like, yeah, it's like every time you want to go drive. Imagine every time you got in your car, you had to go to the gas station too. You could never just go somewhere. You had to do something in order to do something else, which again is sort of like scaling this like 10 or 20 foot wall. The more things that we can do to remove that sort of process, that improves the quality of both the developer and, and hopefully the user experience for like millions if not more people. So don't take this stuff lightly. Um, don't take the, the effectiveness of developer interface or developer experience like lightly. Like your time matters and, and this stuff matters too. Sorry, it's like a total rant. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is like paint the pictures, the background color. Okay, so we are going to basically, they're, they're, okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna bind some logic. So we're gonna say v bind in this case, right? So, so we've seen like v on for like click events like click here we're going to do v bind and this v syntax should get really similar uh, should get really comfortable for you for now because you like you've seen like v if v4 etc so here we're going to use v bind and specifically so we're going to use this like dsl style okay, we're going to say v bind class so this is like very similar to class except this is like I can I can I can make this like a logical expression, right? This is basically like on or off, right? It's like binary, but this is like a mission, like it's like a it's like um, a control panel. Like I have an actual interface to 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 do this. Now, I've shown you like this vbind is the same. It, this is just a shorthand. So I'm an advocate for for shorthands. If we do like if we do v on click that can be reduced to click. If I do um, v bind, oops, v, v bind class, <clears throat> that can be uh, reduced to class, right? So these are just shorthands. Okay, so I'm gonna say, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to activate a class, right? And I know I, I have a boom class ready, so I just need to turn it on. Effectively, <coughs> yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm checking. I'm saying, hey, yeah. So I, I wrap this in here, and now it's like that DSL we were talking about. So now I can say, hey, if we like, we'll use this expression. Now this is a DSL, so it's actually even more concise. Um, so instead I can say like, just emoji, right? So I'm saying, oh, it's the class, it's not the emoji. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so I'm binding the class of boom to whether or not the emoji has exploded, right? So this is pretty, this is pretty cool. Think about this. We're, we're going to attach the, the class boom which is what this is saying, I want you to activate boom if our emoji is, uh, like if it's, like it's exploded, right? <clears throat> That's it, <laughs> right? So like this is like three or four lines of code, this is like not one line of code. And now our app is like, <clears throat> as simple as it is, it's like that much more like, like, like it's like that much more substantive. Um, and again, there like there's a lot of different ways you could write this. I just think that um, and this is like a good way for demonstration purposes. So when you hear people talking about reactive, it's like uh, it doesn't mean very much. Let me check for questions. How often do I stream? Hi. Okay, great. I love the questions. So don't feel shout out. To be honest, so the question is, um, how often do I stream? And what is a DSL? Um, I'm honestly trying to get into the habit of streaming twice a day for like maybe an hour or less, maybe more each time, because I want to make this a habit for me. You know, just like brushing my teeth or like taking a shower. I want, um, I want to to share what it feels like to be a developer and to learn like really valuable um, tools. I want to make that like a common practice because if I'm not, I feel like I'm not helping people. Um, so that's, that's, that's like twice a day is like what I'm aiming for. I might burn out or maybe I like get really into it like Jonathan Blow and I'm like doing like 15 videos a day. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to put everything on YouTube, put a nice thumbnail so it's like very clickable. Um, yeah, so I hope that, 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 that you like that. Um, okay, so a DSL. Let me just like review this real quick. Uh, let, me, let me ask Google. Hey Google, what is a DSL? Ah, a DSL is a camera. Well, what? <laughs> right? Oh, I'm sorry, I said DSLR. What is a DSL? Still a camera. Uh, uh, let's do, oh, what is a DSL? Programming. So a DSL is what's called a domain-specific language. So last night in the stream, I talked about regular expressions. And one of the things I talked about is a regular expression that we can use to parse whether text will match an expression. So like, let me just like really quickly show you an example of a regular expression. So we do, uh, okay, and then do sublime, oops. Okay, so this, these are like regular expressions, right? And like, why am I showing you this? Um, let me go to regex101.com and you can too. Regular expression is an example of a domain specific language. So like HTML is like a domain. CSS is a domain. Um, you know, like parsing text can be thought of as a domain. It's like any area of thing. So like if I have like the string hello world and I want to like, I want to match any string that looks like hello exclamation mark. But like, it's like, it's like our hello, um, like who example earlier, right? I can't do this with a regex, but I can, I can say like, uh, like anything. Oops, yeah, I can be like, give me anything. This is a, um, what's it called? This is a DSL because it's effectively like me saying uh, like if string has prefix hello, blah, 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 like and this isn't a real language and like string has suffix. <clears throat> well, it's like pretty readable as a language. Um, and it has like the suffix like this it's like matching the string, um, then like, then like it matches, right? So instead of writing 
<clears throat> all this code, I can use a DSL. So DSLs are like not limited to HTML, or they're just like these like they 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 are they are ways of writing code that is more suggestive of their environment. So the the point being that like hello star <clears throat> is like ten times more concise than the if statement. There are like other reasons you may or may not use a regex, but the point is that domain specific languages tend to take a problem and and really um, sort of gestate at um, just, it's, it's proportional to the complexity of the problem. So let me just do one more like very, very quick sidebar, then I promise we'll go back. So I gave like this really short talk and this slide is just what I wanna highlight. So Alan Kay is like one of the, like the founding fathers of like computer science in the 70s at Xerox Park. And he is quoted with, he is like, he has said, or has said multiple times, he complains basically, but like in like, not like a complaining kind of way, um, that, that like, is it really that complex or did we make it complicated? There are some like awesome YouTube video, videos of him talking about this. But the point is that, yes, exactly, it's like SQL. So SQL is a domain specific language. Sorry, I didn't say that earlier. SQL is a domain specific language. Regular expressions are a domain specific language. Vue uses a kind of a DSL to make JavaScript, writing JavaScript within your markup um, much more succinct and, and like manageable. So, D so like DSL, you can't like write an app per se in a DSL. It's not like a general programming language, right? Like part of the reason Python is such a popular language, even it, you know, even how with the compromises that it has, it's because it's a general language. A domain specific language is on the other end of the spectrum. It's much more compact, it's much more focused, but at the same time, it's much better at a specific job. So that's what a DSL is. Um, so yeah, I hope that that helps with the question. So anyway, this is, um, this is really the extent to which you can make an app a web app that will be compliant across all the way up to like Internet Explorer 9 and like 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 look at the complexity here like there's like this is so few lines of code that this is like a really amazing time to start thinking about building web apps because you have Flexbox which will help you with the positioning of elements you have Grid which will help you with the actual the overall sort of design of your your websites which means we don't have to use like hacks anymore. And then you have the addition of things like Vue, which means you can make programming the front end of your website's design much more intuitive um, and powerful. And then if like as you sort start to get it more advanced, you can use Go or Golang to actually program the back end. So like with knowledge of just like HTML, CSS, Vue and Golang, like Vue is like also being JavaScript, um, think about what you can do. You can like build and ship your own startups very fast, very quickly, and very, like the most important thing is it's maintainable. Um, like anyone who is like a confident view developer, I can give them this code. I mean, like they may re refactor a few things, they may like change a few things, but the point is like there is like an idiomatic, like the, the code is idiomatic enough that I don't need to be like in the bushes about like what's going on. It's very like readable for me as a developer. Um, and, and again, that sort of speaks to like the developer experience, the, you're welcome, the developer experience, the developer uh, interface. Okay, so the, the thing is like, I'm, we're not gonna build, um, I, don't, I don't think we'll have time to build the, the cat thing, but I'll show you the code because, sorry, there's like way too much going on here. I'll show you the cat thing because now that you're like sort of acclimated with, um, view, I think you can read the code now. I mean, I'm very confident you can read the code now. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Just like the last one. Okay, yeah. So this is, this is Schrodinger. Um, it's about 100 lines of code. I could probably make it shorter. I'm gonna go through this line by line. And then by the end of this, I think you're gonna have some confidence about what you can do. And so um, there's going to be a one hour, like, like there's gonna be a one hour course that I'll be teaching on Scrimba about Vue that is just gonna focus on, uh, like you're not gonna get like my rants or anything. Um, 
It's going to focus on building web apps with simplicity using Vue. Uh, so it's not like just a Vue thing. It's like how do you build something? It's like that too. So this is how Schrodinger works. Um, let's talk about it, right? We let's like this is interesting, right? So we have a CSS animation, which I have called Shake, which over however long it is, it's going to basically rotate. And if you look really closely, it's not actually like, like it's not a consistent rotate. It's like sort of like like it's like, it's like, it it feels sort of like alive, and that's it's like it's creepy, which is ideal. And the reason is um, when I'm calling, when I have the class, and I'm using the CSS animation, I'm using infinite, just like yeah, go forever. So like every third of a second, go through all these transforms. And at the end of it, I want you to not just like keep going down, I want you to actually go back up. So it's like, it's like instead of walking in a straight line, I'm like walking left, then I'm walking right. Uh, sorry, it, it's, sorry, it's like instead of like walking like forward left and then walking forward right, I'm walking forward left, forward right, forward right, forward left, forward left, forward right, forward right, forward. So it's, I'm alternating back and forth between whether I'm going forward or backward, which gives it this sort of like uncomfortable sort of like aesthetic. But I mean, it's like one line of code though. Um, uh, I don't think we're using flash at all, so you can ignore this bit right here. The rest of it, I mean, we're like we're centering some stuff, we're like aligning the text. This stuff isn't like that the point of it. And then we have two classes. We have a dead class and we have an alive class. So before we had a boom class, right? The boom would change the color to white and then the background to like that really nice red. Here the color becomes red if I click it. So this text is the, the dead class and then we're changing the background. And then in the instance that it's alive, the text goes white and then we change the background to some CSS variable. So Think about this, right? Like we have a dead class, we have an alive class. We we can write CSS really as like like semantically as possible, and that's like a really big win. Okay, now we can start to get into. I'll do the markup first, and then we'll talk about the the JavaScript. Let me check any questions that might be there. Okay. So yeah, if you guys need me to go faster or slower, um, this is for you. So like, like, please tell me how I can like help you. Okay, if there aren't any questions, I think we can keep going. Okay. Okay, so, so a lot of this isn't technically necessary. Like, I don't need this, like, unselectable class. Um, let's, like, okay, so we have a div. Our div has a class of app. Could be an ID. I'm just, like, using class here, which means that in our view, we can expect to see const app, new app, right? Okay, so this should make sense to you. And then this should make sense to you. Um, unselectable is just, it's like, remember, if we click it, we don't want it to highlight it. Uh, so we can use a class to do that. I'm making this full screen, and then I'm centering it. So this is more or less uh, simple. And then here, I'm just lazy. So I'm like setting up a, a width. Okay, so really the magic is this stuff, right? So remember, class, the, the shorthand could be that, that's identical, and then this is identical to that. Okay, so let's get into here. We have a property called contents, which has the package. So at the start of our app, the state is just this box. So that's displaying effectively, right? Remember we did like hello, whoops, like who? Remember? Here, we're effectively doing like hello Oops. Contents. So that's, the, I mean, the fact that it's called contents isn't significant, but that's the point. Uh, okay, and then here instead, right, we, so far we've worked with element and a data, element and data and one method, and here we have element, data, and methods. So remember, we're starting to think about our CSS and our methods in terms of states. And states is sort of like, again, it's like a weird way to describe something. It just means it's, it's like, it's a state is like some point in our app. So in our app, in, in like the bomb app, right, we have two states. We have like the 
did it like it didn't explode and it did explode. Right? We have two states here. We have um, so far we have like three three ish states. Right? The box is closed. The cat is dead. Or uh, all right. So we're setting this content to close box dead Schrodinger. Okay. So all right. So this should make sense, right? We're, I'm using a ternary, um, I didn't explain this before. Ternary is a way to do an if statement really concisely. So instead of like this, you can do like like this, um, do this, or that. These two, so it'd be like um, if here, like if bool value. So this would be bool value, and then we'll like make this a function for emphasis. Um, do that, right? I just don't want to like lose people just because I'm using a ternary. We'll be finished in like, um, like five minutes, just so just so you guys know. Check questions. Okay, cool. So a ternary is a very compact way of writing an expression like this, right? Instead, we're doing like this, and so we're saying <clears throat> we have a function called Schrodinger, and when we call the function, what happens is if the box is basically the initial state, right? If it's the box, then we're either going to choose if it's dead or alive, okay? So we're, we're picking either that it's dead or it's one of the cats. So, right, we have like, we have different cats. It's not the same cat. So like, 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 like let's say you said like this contents equals pick dead or alive, right? That's basically what this line of code is doing, right? We're saying set this to be dead or alive. But similarly, if this content does not equal the box, right? Meaning if this content is dead or alive, then we want to revert back to the initial state. So that's what this line of code is doing. So Schrodinger is deciding, it's like, it's like the quantum state. It's, de it's de de deciding whether or not our cat is dead or alive, right? And then we have, um, I don't actually remember what closed and dead does. Closed and dead, those are classes. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, we're gonna come back to this. Just ignore these two lines for now. So all we care about is Schrodinger. Okay, so unless there are questions, what does the, oh, that is a really good question. What does the dot, 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 in, yeah, sorry, I skipped over that. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so let's say you have like a very, let me, let me, sorry, let me back this up. Okay. Can you imagine me teaching all of this and like more advanced examples in an hour? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we do like, we have bar cats equals this like thing, right? Then I think we sort of understand that. We have an array of strings and each string is like one of these like beautiful cats, right? <clears throat> so we have a collection or we have like an array of different cats and we don't want all of them. And we don't want like, we don't want like just one cat every time because that'd be pretty boring. We want to have a different cat every time or like we want to have a random, not a different cat, but a random cat every time. Um, right, <laughs> like sometimes the cat's happy to see us, sometimes it's not happy. <clears throat> so the way that I set this up, of course there's other ways to do this, so I have an array of different cats, basically cat moods. Um, another word for this variable that might be better would be like moods, right? And cats is fine. And I have this really clever function that I wrote called pick. So it's like I want to pick if the cat is dead or alive. And this needs to return um, one of the two. So it needs to either return, is it dead? Or it needs to return, is it alive? And additionally, if it's alive means one of the different cats. Oh my God, I deleted, shit, sorry. I deleted like the cats from the program. Cool. So, so we need to choose whether it's dead or we need to select one of the, the cats that, like one of the, the possible options, right? So, so, this is where the dot 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 uh, syntax comes from. Um, I believe if you search for variadic, variadic, like uh, yeah, arguments, 
this is going to be like the technical information related to it. So we have a function that takes a list, which takes a variadic parameter, which means basically that we can send it a single cat as the argument. We can be like, doop, or we can send it an array. So variadic um, arguments are very flexible. Uh, it just means, hey, I can, I can pass you one individual argument, or I can pass you an array of arguments. So it's very flexible. Um, and then I'm effectively giving back some random index of the available indices, which is what this is doing. I'm saying, like, if this, this array has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm saying this array has nine cats, which means we have indices zero through eight, not nine available to us. This function will pick one of the, the arrays, like it'll pick basically zero through eight in this case. Okay, so we're calling the function pick, which is like pick dead or alive. And we're gonna either pick dead, which is only which only has like one, um, like one kind of dead, or if it's alive, there's many kinds of alive, right? So we have a pick inside of a pick, which is very very clever because we only have to use the same function. We don't have to write like a special function every time. So here, first, first before any of this happens, I'm picking one of the like the different cat states, right? So I pick one of the cats, and then that cat is ready to go. So once this evaluates, I can just replace this with one of these, right? So this evaluates, I get this, and then I just need to pick whether the cat is dead or alive. So then it goes back, it calls it, and it's like, hey, now I just need to pick between zero and one. I don't need to pick between zero and eight, which is a, it's just, it's like a, we can use the same function for different purposes. Um, again, there's other ways to write this, but that's why we have cats here. I need to basically like send this array as individual arguments. So what's happening is instead of sending it the array like this, like, oh, that's about example, like cat one. Instead of this, I'm actually expanding it to this. So that's what the dot 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 is doing. It's taking an array and it's turning it into a sequence of like normal um, arguments. Uh, and, and most programming languages support variadic arguments in some form or another. So it's, it's just like it's a good thing to know um, in general because they can be very, very, very useful. Okay, so we're picking dead or one of the alive states. And that's really like the whole logic behind our program. This is really just for the CSS. Um, so this is the last part, right? We, we, when we click the cat, sorry, the box, the box is our contents. When we click the box, we're going to invoke Schrodinger, which will set contents for us, right? And then I'm basically, this is like a little bit more advanced, but the point is I'm setting the, the I'm setting CSS classes depending on whether or not the cat is dead or alive. So I don't care which version of the, the alive cat I'm getting back. I just care, hey, is the cat alive or is the cat dead? And if it is, um, then I can assign one of these classes, right? So that's really all that's going on. Um, so view is like really powerful. Now, this is like a little bit more advanced than the stuff we've been doing, but the point is it, it's, it's, it's like navigable. Like it's, um, it's like there's like clearly a line of like there's like, um, it's like we're walking up a hill, right? It, like the complexity is a linear. It's not like, the, we, it's not like we have like this exponential complexity. We, we can learn and sort of expect the learning curve to just increase a little bit, but not too much at a time. And this is really the, sort of the tip of what you can do. So, so like be inspired, but also like be excited rather that there's like, this is still like, like this is one of three screencasts and like if each one's like an hour minimum, um, there's a lot more that we can cover. So just to sort of give you like a sneak peek, like. We're going to do more with uh, components, which is like another exciting way that you can write HTML. Um, and we're also going to work more with like the V if, the V4 and stuff. So you can see how you can refactor even non-interactive websites to be like, like a fraction of what they would be if you had to like code out every single like paragraph or whatever yourself. Like, okay, so the question was, um, could you not do pick cats? Um, I, 
Uh, so I, I, I don't think so, because if you think about it, it's a good question. So the question was, can I just like, why can't I just like use cats? I have to do dot 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 cats, right? It's a good question. Let me show you what would happen. I, I think what would happen. Um, right, so I can do like pick <clears throat> one of the like available cats, which is what this expression would evaluate to, right? So this is the same as this. The alternative would be this, right? So that's what we get instead. Now if you think about it, um, these are these are different statements. Like, like think about this, like what's the difference here? At least I think they're different. Um, so here, like get just get rid of this. This isn't helping right now. The point is here we only have one thing to pick, right? There's only one like thing, right? Here we have lot, lots of things, right? So we have like value one, value two, value three. So in this case, I'm pretty sure it's always gonna just like return the, um, I think it's gonna return the whole array. Cause like it's gonna be like cats at index, sorry, it's gonna be like list at index, list, list at index zero is cats, right? But we don't want the array. We want an indice in the array. So we need to not just send an array like, we don't want to send an array and get back an array, right? So we need to sort of like expand the array and get one of the indices from the array. So that's why we need to do this. And like, like just to prove a point, I'm semi-confident this will work. If I wasn't, I wouldn't try this. Uh, let's just like throw this in console log and see what happens. Um, console log, right? Inspect. Right, so I should have cats ready to go, right? So I have cats, do I have cats? Uh, console log cats zero. Okay, I have cats, make that bigger. And then I also have um, random, right? So I say like, give me a random uh, cat, or let's do like, um, I think this should work, like A or B, give me one of these. Why isn't that working? So, oh, rand's not a function. Oh, it's pick, sorry, pick. So we do like A, oops, A or E. Okay, so what happens if we do this? Yeah, so this is the problem. We're gonna get the whole array back. We're not gonna get an indice from the array. Now, alternatively, you might do like this, right? You might like say like C over like uh, C, D, right? In this case, you're gonna get one of these two different arrays back. Um, at least you should, I'm not saying C, yeah, I am, okay. So the difference is whether we're returning an array or we're returning a value within the array. Um, so yeah, so when we use the, the dot syntax, uh, like, right, if I, if I didn't want that, instead I wanted A or B, then I can use this variadic thing to sort of, like, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for free, basically, right? Um, so this will convert your argument from a array to a like a, a, a um, series of values. I hope that helps. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for for this live cast. Um, are there any final questions before we wrap up? More than welcome. I'm like living with this stuff, and I like need to tell someone everything I'm learning. So this is a great opportunity for me. Then, holy shit, this is like two hours. Okay, uh, if there's no more questions, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. But you are more than amazing for being here. And I'm going to upload this so that the whole world can see, including the questions that were asked. Okay, um, and then next we're going to, like not today, um, aiming for tomorrow, we're gonna do this, right? We're gonna make from scratch, the this one, which is like really cool, right? We're going to make this from scratch using Vue. And the thing is like, this is much easier than I think you might perceive because it's like beautiful and there's like soft shadows. The reality is, is 
this is like so much more simpler than you can imagine, not like like trying to offend you or anything. It's just that Vue, because the, Vue is like really like a jetpack, right? So going from point A to point B by foot is very different than going from point A to point B by like jetpack, right? It's just, so, so this might look sort of like cool or whatever, but it's just a couple of lines of code using Vue. I mean, think about this, right? We have like some click event and it's changing the, the background and we have like a CSS animation or like a hover event. And the rest is like, just like HTML and CSS, right? This is the debugger. Um, so, so yeah, think of like, you can make beautiful interactive web apps with ease using Vue and that's why I'm advocating for it. And I also need help like designing this course because like there's all this amazing stuff you can do with Vue and I like, I, I want to convin convince people of the significance um, of the time that we're living in with Vue and Go and, and uh, Vue, Go, uh, Grid, Flexbox. That's a big deal to have these like four tools in your tool belt you can do things that, you know, took entire teams a decade or even five years ago. So yeah, if there's no final questions, um, if there are, ask them. If not, I'll just wait a couple seconds for them to, to come in. Otherwise, we'll wrap this up and I'll, I'll put it on YouTube. Okay, guys. I think there aren't any questions. Well... Thank you. I did not expect to have anyone follow me this far into this live cast, so thank you. I don't feel completely terrible. Anyway, um, you're, you're already here, so let me just tell you. It's, so I was thinking in like six, so six to five, so it's 1.30, which would be, six would be seven, I cannot do math right now. It's 1.30, and I wanted to say 6.5. In 6.5 hours, um, I was thinking of doing another live cast, not related to view, but related to animating, animating emoji on the commit line, um, which I don't think will be very long. I think it'll be like 30 minutes or something by comparison. But I like, again, if you, if you are getting into development and you need some inspiration or you need someone to sort of just explain things to you, like what is a DSL and like, like use me, um, use me for sure. So. We'll do another live cast tonight in a couple hours and I'll put, put it on YouTube similarly. And, and then we're gonna do another view tomorrow, probably same time tomorrow, um, if you wanna get into the habit of like opening Twitch. Um, again, this would be the, the advanced like color picker with the interaction and everything. Um, and if like, and like hopefully the day after we'll do like the third and final view thing. We'll see, anyway. Thank you more than, more than I can express for being here and, and listening to me. Um, it's a privilege, seriously. It really is a privilege. All right, I'll be on Twitter in the meantime. and Reach out to me if you have questions. You don't need to, like, you can just ask me questions in general. It's no problem. Anyway, thank you for being here.